The following podcast is going to contain spoilers along with me, just a regular guy, talking about all the things I love, such as comics, movies, television, music, and books. So yeah, proceed at your own risk. to another episode of Just Another Fanboy. I almost said the wrong the wrong podcast. Almost. I caught myself there at the last moment. Frankly, you probably wouldn't have even known had I not mentioned it. But I have that issue of mentioning stuff. I enjoy mentioning stuff. There's nothing that does my heart better than mentioning things. Speaking of mentioning things, today I want to talk about a comic book called Berserker Unbound from Dark Horse Comics. This is issue number one. It was written by Jeff Lemire with art by Mike Diodato Jr., colors by Frank Martin, and letters by Steve Wands. This was created by Jeff Lemire and Mike Diodato Jr. Okay, so this, this book opens up with the Mongrel King. That's what he calls himself. We don't get any names. So far, there aren't any names, or at least of this guy. This guy doesn't have a name in this book. Think of Conan the Barbarian, but with red hair. That's kind of what he looks like. He's a big dude. He's half naked, big pecs and washboard abs. And he's got a sword and an axe and a shield on his back. And his his belt is like a big, scary monster face with, with big teeth. He looks pretty awesome. I'll just say that. And he's walking through this desert land. And he's coming home. He's been gone. It, 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 it appears as if he's been gone for a while. And he, he's coming home. And he's very, I don't want to use the word excited because he doesn't look excited. He looks like he's brooding. But he seems to be excited in his own way to see his wife and daughter. But as he crests the hill, his village is in the distance. He sees a black plume of smoke on the horizon and he senses something bad has happened. He gets to the village. The whole place has been destroyed. Everybody is dead along with his wife and his child. Slain by raiders, and they show up. Just a bunch of dudes with these freaking wolf pelts on, using the wolf head as, a, as his hats. They, so they look like wolf men, but they're very, very 13th warrior with the, with the bear dudes that wore the bear heads. And so these guys wear wolf heads. And so the mongrel king just, he just dives in, man. There's a wave of, of these raiders coming at him and he just dives in and he just starts hacking and slashing. And just before you know it, he's, he's slain them all, all on his own. And then suddenly there's this dude there who, is a, who, who, see, who appears to be a wizard of some sort. He's kind of weird looking. He didn't look like a warrior. And uh, he makes a comment about the mists. And I don't remember what the comment was, but it's very, you know, mysterious. The guy wears black. So you're assuming he's the bad guy. Oh, the mists. Ooh. You know, very creepy and, and uh, mysterious. Well, then, uh, then more raiders show up. And our, our character, our hero, the mongrel king, decides he doesn't want to fight anymore. And he runs away. And as he's running away, he's berating himself in his head for being a coward. And I found that slightly odd because I guess you can assume, I guess what they're saying there is when the, when the first group, group of raiders showed up, he went berserk, which is the whole point of the, the book is called Berserker Unbound. He was so upset over the death of his wife and child, the murder of them, that he went berserk and he killed everybody that came at him. But by the time the second group of raiders showed up, the, he, he was no longer a berserker. The rage had passed, and so he ran. Well, he stumbles upon a cave. He runs into the cave. There's these weird symbols all around him glowing in the dark, and he falls down this hole. And as he's falling through this hole, all this weird stuff just happens all around him. And he lands in this chamber, 
with more glowing symbols on the walls all around him. And he realizes to get out, he has to pick one of them. So he doesn't really care much about life at this point. So he picks a symbol and he walks through this, this, this doorway and he wakes up in this forest and he's kind of groggy and he's wounded. And this dude is there and he starts poking him in the face with a stick. And the dude looks, he's dressed kind of funny. He's got a trench coat. He's got some pants and, a, and maybe a t-shirt on. And he starts, he starts, uh, he's really angry at our hero He's like, what are you doing here? This is my place. You're not going to steal my stuff. Get out of here. And then he realizes that the mongrel king is wounded. And he says, oh, hey, buddy, are you okay? Here, you wait right here. I'll get you some help. Wait right here. And he, he takes off. So our hero rises and he looks off into the distance and out beyond the trees is what looks like New York City or Chicago or some modern city from our world, our time. And that's how the issue ends. So the description of the book, you know, going into it, the premise of the book is that this barbarian from a sword and sorcery type of world is sucked into what in, in essence is our world. And there's a wizard trying to kill him and he has to, he has to stop this wizard. That's the premise of the book. And when I first read about it before I saw any preview art, I wasn't going to get it because my, um, on the one hand, I'm like, Ooh, Jeff Lemire, I like him. Barbarian, yes, I'm there. Sword and sorcery, I'm on it. Coming into our world, that sounds great. Mike Diodato Jr. on art, pass. I'm not a big Mike Diodato Jr. fan. That dude's been around for a while. I remember books. He, he had done, uh, I believe it was Wonder Woman, way back in the 90s, when, when the whole image boom was happening. He hit his style of art. I just didn't, I just didn't care for too much. And throughout the years, he has done the occasional book that I've liked. I think he did the dark Avengers. I thought it was okay. His, I think here's the thing about Mike Diodato Jr.'s art. I'm not, like I said, I'm not a big fan, but I think it works with some stories. And I guess, but I guess I just, the, the fact that I'm not a big fan of his, it just didn't, when I saw his name attached to this, I just said pass. But then I see some preview art. I've forgotten all about this book. I see some preview art, and I'm like, ooh, what's this? Berserker Unbound, Jeff Lemire, Barbarians. This sounds great. Sword and Sorcery. Oh, my gosh, look at this art. It's beautiful. Who is this? Mike Diodato Jr. Sacre bleu. I, I often turn French in my surprise and shock. But this guy is bringing something to this book that I don't know I've seen from him before. And you add the colors to it, and it's just a freaking gorgeous book. His art style fully complements what's trying to happen in this book. The, the, the whole barbarian thing, he's knocking it out of the park. The fight scenes are incredible. When he first encounters the raiders and he goes berserk and he just dives into this mass of bodies, it's very reminiscent of Thor Ragnarok when he's on the uh, he's on the rainbow bridge and all the, the bad guys are coming at him in this big mass and they're practically climbing up on top of each other and Thor leaps up into the air and that Led Zeppelin song is playing. That's what I'll, I'll be honest. I turned the page and I got to that 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 uh, that panel and that Led Zeppelin song just started running through my head. But it only made the the. It only made the panel even better. And then there's the scene where he falls through the hole in the cave. And there's this two-page spread of just all this weird, magical, freaking mystical, crazy crap just going on, just swirling around him. Like he's falling, like he's been flushed down a toilet. And then swirling around him, going down the hole with him is just this crazy crap. And I'm not saying crap because it's a toilet bowl. But you've got like a squid and freaking leaves and this woman holding a sword or something. And it's just just this crazy stuff going on around him. And it's beautiful. It's just I I was almost upset at first because I'm looking at this art and I'm saying to myself, this can't be Mike Diodato Jr. Someone's lying to me. But then I had to, you know, reach back into my mind and realize that I have seen stuff from him that I did enjoy. I had to, I had to just shut down that bias I have 
of him because of stuff I've seen that I did not enjoy. I feel like he did Thor at one point. It's like during the 90s, he wasn't the only one. Everybody was trying to jump on this particular art style that was made famous by McFarlane and and Liefeld and Jim Lee. And his he you could totally tell he was dipping his toe into that into that art style. And I he just I didn't think maybe maybe he just came along at a time where during the 90s where I was starting to get tired of that art style. And so when he came along and started writing, making books and started making a name for himself, I was over it. And so his art epitomized everything that I didn't like about comics at that time. And that just cemented his name in my head as somebody that I'm no longer going to like. Right? But this is an amazing looking book. Now, the story, not I'll be honest with you, not much happened in this first issue. Guy comes back from wherever he's been for a couple of years, sees his family slain murdered by raiders, fights the raiders, runs from the raiders, falls into a wormhole, wakes up in New York City or somewhere that's supposed to be like New York City. That's it. That's the first issue. Haven't read the second issue yet, but this is one of the few new books that I'm getting now. And I've decided to try to get a new book here and there while I can. I do enjoy the older books, but if I can, you know, if I can there's so much stuff that's coming out that I find it overwhelming to try to get into new stuff, especially with the big two. There's just so much going on that just even even thinking of trying to dip my you, you just you can't go over to Marvel or DC and just be a casual reader. I'll just get one or two issues. I'll just get one or two titles from Marvel. I'll just get one or two titles from DC and I'll be good because the whole point of those comic universes is that they they you know they have a it's a shared universe. So it's very hard to just read one or two titles unless it's a standalone type of thing like I'm doing with Spider-Man. And so that means getting stuff from the other companies uh, because Berserker Unbound has nothing to do with any of the other books that Dark Horse is doing. So I don't have to go and try to track. I, You know, at some point in Berserker Unbound, I'm not going to go, okay, what's, what are they talking about? When did this happen? What's And then I read a little editorial note at the bottom. Oh, you must see this other book to understand what this means. And while I love that kind of stuff, when you're a dude on a budget who can't spend a lot of money, drives you crazy. Drives you crazy. But Berserker Unbound, so far, again, first issue, not much to do with the story. There's not a lot going on, but it's such a beautiful book. And I know that Jeff Lemire can write the crap out of things. So I know that there's probably some good stuff coming up. So I'm going to keep going with it for now. And that's based solely on how wonderful the book looks and makes me feel inside in the heart. So maybe next month, well, not next month. I've already got issue number two. I don't know when issue number three comes out. So maybe in a couple of weeks, maybe in a week, maybe in a couple of days. I don't know. I'll talk about issue number two. But until then, I'm Steven and I'm Just Another Fanboy. Be nice to each other. Just Another Fanboy is a presentation of the Stephen or Else podcast. Questions and comments can be directed to feedback at stephenorelse.com. You can support the show for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com slash stephenrorr and get instant access to the My Other Podcast podcast, a weekly show about whatever crawls its way into my tiny little mind just moments before I tap record. You can find me on the World Wide Web at stephenorelse.com or find me on Twitter and Instagram by searching for at Stephen or else. I also encourage you to subscribe to the show, leave us a five-star review, and share this episode with a friend. Just Another Fanboy is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. You can find that over at comicspodcasts.com. All links will be in the show notes. Good job. Ooh.